So, hello and welcome everybody at our lovely space Tiki Bar again. And we have a lovely guest today. It's Theresa Hanek, the German science fiction writer. Woo! Hi, Robert. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So, uh, we're totally excited actually because you have a new novel at the start. Please let us know about that more. It's a mystery thriller. Yes, that's true. And, and it's just here. It's a huge novel. As you can see, it's just right uh, beside me here on the couch. Actually, of course, it's, uh, yeah, if, if you buy it in the shops, it's just a regular size book. And yeah, this time it's not a science fiction novel, but it's a mystery thriller, actually. And um, yeah, which is uh, kind of new for me. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's a rather nice story or um, thrilling story. And it's, uh, it's about a family secret. And um, it, it's about a family. Um, who who doesn't work anymore as it used to so like families break apart and uh, who is who, whose fault is it and how, how do people cope with this experience and uh, how do people change over time in this kind of broken family and and mm -hmm. the, the question is can you ever really know each other even if in a family and what do you do if you discover new secrets and new uh, facets of some of your family members Ah, ah, okay. So I think a lot of families can identify with that because sometimes you wake up and you think, oh, I know my, I don't know my brother anymore or my mother. So what happened? So this sounds really exciting. Yeah, it is. Um, I, I really like the story. It was, um, some people already asked me, why, why did you change the genre? And, and for me, it's, it's, it's never really that I, that I identify myself as being just in this genre. There's just a lot of stories that that find their own genre. Some some yeah. stories just want to be told in a kind in, in a certain kind of way. And and this story, which is kind of personal to me, just wanted to be told in this kind of mystery family thriller way. Yeah, that's it. Very exciting. And um, is there um, the title is pretty interesting. What is what is the title about? How is it called? It's called in German König und Meister, and it's King and Master. Uh, what kind of reference is this? Yeah, König und Meister is a reference to the main characters in the novel. So the mm -hmm. novel is about the family König, um, and the, the main main character is Ada König, um, and she's resolving her problems with her father, Frank König. And uh, the master, the Meister, is a walnut tree in the garden of the father's house. And he mm -hmm. plays a pretty important role in the family history, which will unreal itself, well, while reading the novel. I can't spoil too much here. But um, yeah, it's um, <laughs> there, well, the, there the are some three, reminiscences three. to other to other literature, so I can't really tell you so much about it. So um, <laughs> you I don't need, you you don't need to. <laughs> people have some people have to buy the novels. So actually, the the tree is the master, and the tree is one of the characters within the book. That is that is really exciting. So yeah. as far as I can see, that's that's a, so it's another universe to your former optimizer universe. The first two novels of yours played in the in the optimizer universe. This is what what I read, and this one is a total new universe you wrapped up. Yeah, well, I mean, this is always um, the thing with fantasy or science fiction. You you say that you have to invent a new universe to write your stories in. Actually, yeah. every fiction is a new universe. Every book, even every soap opera in, 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 in TV is just a new universe. So um, this is a, a story that unfolds itself in so-called reality, mm -hmm. in so-called uh, today's reality. However, of course, it's a universe by itself, so it has nothing to do with the science fiction universe of the optimizers, mm -hmm. but it is in... Um, in, 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 in the vicinity, vicinity of Munich in today, but there is a little bit of mystery there, but it's not really a fantasy universe like I would say in, in Lord of the Rings or something. That's, it's, it's, okay. it's reality with a little bit of more about it. Wow, exciting. So, so actually I read the first novels of yours. Will there be also a, sequ a sequel of the Optimizer universe in future or a sequel of Master and King and Master? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. There will be a sequel to Optimize Us, although there were a lot of people asking me for a third part, but I think I yeah. finished it pretty clearly, mm -hmm. although I always have new ideas. So I never say never. There is a folder on my desktop saying Optimize Us 3, but you know, <laughs> who knows. <laughs> and um, König and Meister is really uh, a story in itself. It's it's done on the last page, you know, it's done. There, there will be no yeah. sequel. 
but yeah. there is another novel coming which i'm very very excited about um it's called pantopia and it's going to be released in exactly more or less a year or 11 months we don't know yet the release date and it's going wow. to be um an, a utopian novel and finally something where we can solve all the problems and make everything good in the world and i really love it it was wow. as you know i mean 2020 was terrible for everybody of us it was just a fucking shitty year yeah. and i i it's just at some point I couldn't stand it anymore. I thought everything is so hopeless, everything's so terrible. And and after Corona, there's the, the climate change waiting and what are we going to do? And everything's just terrible. And then I started writing this novel, which I had planned before, but which didn't really work out. And then suddenly I started writing and it was just such a, such a relief for me to finally do something good and to change something and to have hope. And it was for me such a great experience writing this novel. And now I'm working on it very hard to get it released soon. And then I'm really, really looking forward to it. And I think this is going to be a very good wow. novel. I hope so. I hope it's wow. going to be a novel that you like and that you can be inspired of. And um, I'm very, very excited about it. So, so Pantopia great. is going to be there in one year. This is so great because it will come after all this Corona uh, pandemic. And it will be, I think people will love it when they have something optimistic to think about <laughs> the future. And as you know, we had the same topic in 2019 at our festival. So it, yeah. it's always good to produce utopias because the people need new utopias. And um, it's always, I think it's always more difficult to write a good utopy than a rather um, minor bad dystopy. So I'm really, really fascinated by writer who people uh, writes uh, utopies like yeah, it, it was you, you're absolutely right it's it's really difficult i i, I saw it when when i wrote optimizers and the unvollkommenen the imperfect the, the second novel it's i mean we we all are very very um fast at seeing the problems in the world and at criticizing things yeah. and it's and it's true and it's okay to criticize things but it's much harder to to find a, a solution and a solution that really works and a solution that that, that you can build with other people and uh, after all the tragics and catastrophes are much more interesting also for for novelists and for readers so the the literature is full of dystopian novels and the and the yeah. utopias is so difficult to write but also uh, well for me as i said it was so much fun and so hopeful and um it's so I, I can great. just hope that it's going to work out it's so great i'm really curious so i i will read it i'm you you got me totally <laughs> yeah. so so we we are we are always talking about corona did you create any rituals during this time of corona what changed in your life and i know you have a family and you have two children what happened to your life uh, the last year well i guess i never <laughs> had so much work to do as 2020 it was just unhuman it was just terrible we had um, i had a lot of well the writing i loved it but still it was a lot of work and I had about 10 other projects uh, at the same time. And then we had homeschooling. And I just oh. realized I had, I had two phases, once in summer. And the last time just, was just two, one and a half months ago, where I really realized I was on the verge of, of burnout or breaking down or something. And uh, that I really need to change like everything. Wow. <laughs> and oh. at these points I did. And right now it's, it's getting better and I'm more relaxed and I'm saying no more often to projects or things otherwise i would have always said yes i can do it as well i can do more i've always more and now i'm trying to do less actually which is very yeah. difficult for me doing nothing yeah. is barely impossible <laughs> I, I, I i can't just sit on the couch i i mean i, I, I barely ever watch tv and uh, most times I'm, I'm disappointed by what i see so i'm there are so so few series that i really stick to on Netflix or something and uh, because always I think I'm wasting my time I could use it better to write something or do something or create yeah. something and yeah. when I do it's nice but when you're kind of written out as I'm now there is nothing to write about but still you have the feeling that you should so it's a it's it's a weird situation right now but um, yeah, yeah I, I think now I learned to cope with it and be more relaxed about it and just let it be that there's yeah. nothing happening one yeah. day. <laughs> exactly. I think I think this is a bit the um, the weird thing of creative people that they always think they can do more and more and more, but actually creative people are always creative and doing stuff. And then when you have a little pause, like a little break, you think, oh, I'm doing nothing, my gosh. <laughs> but it's good to do nothing from time to time. I think this yeah. is what 
what we learned from from the pandemic so actually what i learned from the pandemic so so by the way we're here on a lonely exoplanet could you imagine um a novel of yours playing on a lonely exoplanet with only a sea and like sheds like here and a little a little a tender bar and could you imagine this or is it too too sure. fantastic no sure why not i mean stories it's it's a uh... It's always a question, what do you want to write about? Sometimes it's a topic that's interesting, sometimes it's characters yeah. that's interesting, sometimes it's just the, the scenery, the universe that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, you, you mix up. It's, it's always like it's also the scenery you said, and that's interesting because creating this world and the scenery, this is also one of, of your absolute talents, and um, I think this is all about in, in fantasy. When you have great scenery, you can mm -hmm. pack like, great characters inside and then play around with them. That's so cool. So I have one question left. Um, what my favorite question to all of my interview partner, what excites you most about science fiction and fantasy at least? What excites me most? Yes. I, why, I, why don't you write, why don't you write, for example, like belletristic or, or like cooking books or whatever? Why is it science fiction? Mm, maybe I think I'd like to keep my options open. When I, I mean, not writing science fiction is restrictious. Yeah. But when I say, I mean, um, you know, my novels are more about social, um, society and, and politics and, yeah. and I'm, how I'm criticizing it or how, my, how I'm now finding new solutions. And um, what, what's getting more and more important to me is the relationship between the characters. So there's a very huge part of me just plotting and, just, and developing these characters. But if I told myself I'm not writing science fiction, I must not use this and this and this. So I must not use some futuristic stuff. I must not use um, fiction as science, so computer science that is very advanced, or I must not use mystery elements. And I don't want to restrict myself. I just, yeah, um, there yeah. are stories that I've written that have nothing to do with either, so fantasy or science fiction, but they're not as much fun, I have to say. I want to be free, even though in a story there's just one Thing that's just a little bit off like what I what, what I really like is for example is the um, the novels of uh, Haruki Murakami and mm -hmm. he's not considered to be a science fiction or fantasy author in Germany because he's so Japanese so he's just writing Japanese style stuff <laughs> yeah. but everything but when you read him there's always something weird about it there's yeah. always something mystic or, or ghosty or strange and I really like this and, and I like and, and this is just the 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 German hypocrisy in literature that they say well yeah. if you're writing real literature you have to stick to the rules and to real reality whatever that means and, and yeah. you must not use supernatural things or or futuristic things or something and in in, in the rest of the world is much more relaxed about it I mean I yeah. guess if I was yeah. in the English speaking community it was just be a fiction writer yeah and yeah. Uh, so I'm just I just like to be free and keep my options open I would say that's it. This is wonderful. This is absolute wonderful. Yeah, I also saw it because I um, I lived in, in London as well, and that's just a normal normal books books that people are love to read. They don't have these much categories, and I think it's always fun to to read science fiction because you have these what if situations or what yeah, if. Yeah. When, and um, I think I also can totally agree with it, with the freedom you got in in developing stories in science fiction. Wonderful. That was so great having you here, Teresa. And the book is available, right? Uh, King and Master is available. And uh, I hope you, you will have a lot of success with it. And I hope we see you again as well on the festival. Thank you so yeah. much for the interview. And uh, yeah, let's speak soon. Yeah, thanks for, yeah, thanks for having me. It's been wonderful <laughs> here in the park. So cool. Thanks a lot.